What's going on and welcome in to another special episode for Just a Bet Outside. It is more baseball talk. What can be better than that? We are here today to talk a little American League Central and I have a new guest with us. This guy is Mr. Baseball. He loves everything baseball and you're going to find out soon who he's a fan of. It's a team in this division. But Brad, what is going on, man? A whole lot. I mean, we're about to talk about the best division in all of baseball. I mean, yeah. the most electric, as as you as I should say. Yeah, um, no, I'm not sure. No pun intended. <laughs> yeah, sure. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you can maybe see his jersey a little bit. It's uh, yeah, it's it's the Detroit Tigers, baby. We're gonna talk about them, but uh, yeah, I was just about to say this is the worst division in baseball, and because it is, don't listen to him. Um, but guess it, what? It There's really there. is. It really is. But there's still some good teams, and it's baseball, and we're going to talk baseball. So this is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, I know Brad's fired up, ready to roll. So uh, also, we're going to give out best bets in this division. Players, teams, whatever it is, we got best bets. We'll give it out at the end. we got a bets recap page at the end also. Um, if you are new to this channel, please hit subscribe. Smash that like button. You guys are crushing it. Really appreciate it. And we have National League preview videos coming out later this week. It's going to be a ton of fun. Baseball starts next week. Whoo, baby. I can't wait. It's going to be exciting. So um, we're going to give out World Series predictions at some point, too. And I'll tell you one thing. It ain't the Tigers winning it. So uh, we know that for a fact. But uh, you got something to say? Yeah, I dare you to argue that one. I have no argument there. It's just hurtful. That's all. <laughs> it just it's hurtful. just a little hurtful. Good. I, feel it, I, feel it, I feel it down in the plums, you know, so <laughs> the plums. very hurtful. Oh, man. Um, okay, so let's start out. And let's go over the division odds and see what we got going on in this division. The Guardians defending this. AL Central champs at plus 130. Twins plus 215. White Sox plus 250. And they have the Tigers and Royals both at yes, plus 3,000, which pretty much means it's an absolute miracle if they win the division. And we're going to go through these teams' strengths, weaknesses, and all that. And let's dive in, starting out with the Cleveland in Guardians. The Guardians is who we're going to be talking about. Um, here we go. Last season, Guardians won the division with a 92 and 70 record. They were also the only team in the division to finish over 500. Wow, that's great. Um, they are the defending AL Central champs, but they did lose in five to the Yankees. I think they had a what was it a two one lead in the playoffs over the Yankees. Yeah, and just just blew it. Just absolutely blew just, it against the Yankees. Yeah. You you can't you can't trust any team in the AL Central to be honest. You no, just can't. Not, not at all. It's impossible. Um, and this Guardian team, the over-under for wins this year is 86.5 compared to 92 last year. So they are projecting to get some uh, less wins. But uh, offseason, they added Josh Bell and Mike Zanino. That's laughable. I know. Yeah, that's, that's well. those are huge pickups. Oh, huge yeah. Pickups. No, huge uh, pickups. My they God. Austin Hedges and Owen Miller, huge losses. Yeah, not, yeah. not a lot of change with this team. Um, there's been three different winners in the last three seasons for this division. So it's kind of all over the place, to be honest with you. Uh, this is a for the most part this team. I mean, they're kind of average, slightly above average. They're seventh in batting average, so that's one of their strengths. Is they put they make contact. Uh, they don't have a lot of power, but they do put the ball in play. They don't strike out a ton. Um, yeah, that's just that's kind of one of the biggest strengths that I took away from them last year. What what do you think about this team, Brad? Any strengths you like? Uh the same thing. I think I think their starting pitching is going to be pretty pretty good. Uh, you know, if Shane Bieber, Trisha McKenzie, Cal Quantrill really step it up again like they they've been doing i mean cal Contra was 15 and 5 last season along with trisha mckenzie being 11 and 11 um but you know right around 3.0 eras so and and a just a ton of strikeouts um and also really good whips at 104 95 and one you know 1.21 so if, if yeah. they can get their starting pitching going they'll, they'll be all right do you think McKenzie can repeat that? I've seen him pitch. He's like this skinny guy who yeah. just whips the ball, isn't he? He's just uh Yeah, and he's he's been healthy. Yeah, he doesn't really yeah. he's not injury prone like Bieber is. Um Trisha McKenzie is probably their best pitcher, in my opinion. He he if he steps up, he'll move to their number one. Wow, over Bieber, you think so, huh? Yeah. You like it? Oh yeah. Yeah. Except if Bieber gets hurt again, I mean yeah. who who yeah. are you gonna turn to? Yep. He's gotta stay healthy. Which is, yeah, which is very likely gonna happen. Yes, more than likely Justin Bieber will get yeah. hurt again. Um, yeah, uh, Terry Francona, he just won Coach of the Year for the third time. That's one of their strengths, I'm going to be honest. I think Francona is a great manager. Um, he's yeah. great for the team. But if we look at the lineup, I mean, the top of the lineup is pretty good. I mean, you're looking at, 
you know, Jimenez, who was sixth in AL MVP voting, and then Stephen Kwan, who came out of nowhere. He had a 9% strikeout rate. I mean, the guy just did not strike out. And Al Berkeley, course, baby. Yeah, that's right. Then you got Al superstar Jorge Ramirez and then Rosario. They got some good pieces to their lineup. Um, what they needed to do in the offseason, in my opinion, was add a big bat, and I mean like a power bat. Um, they need some power to hit these guys in. But you And know, that's pretty much what they did with Josh Bell. Yeah. Yeah, but he's he's lost a little bit. I don't know. I don't, I'm not a big Josh Bell guy anymore. But uh, yeah, no, he's, he's he's not an average guy anymore. I mean, you, he's going to bat like 150. Yeah, and you know what's real funny is they brought in Mike Zanino. The whole team makes yeah. contact, and they bring in Mike Zanino, who whiffs yeah. every, every slider outside possible. Yeah, um, he's got the Joey, Joey Gallo PCI, and it'll be the show. It's just yeah. just that just that big. A little P. It's a little. It's P. it's it's very fun to hit with him. Yeah. Not. Um, and so I think a weakness for this team is their kind of their depth. I know you talk about starting pitching rotation, yeah. you know, being decent, but they're fit for it. We got Savali, you know, Quantrill. I don't – his advanced metrics didn't exactly say he's going to dominate, but uh, no. him and Plesak and, and those guys, like, you know, I don't know. If Bieber goes down, this this rotation's a struggle bus. You know what I mean? Like, it yeah. is just – it's not pretty. It's just tr- – because you're just relying on the two guys up, up top, you know. And uh, so I think that's a weakness. And, and their bullpen's good. I mean, Klasse is maybe the best closer in the game. He is an absolute superstar. He's a stud. Uh, Karinchak, Karinchak, I never know how to pronounce that guy's name, but he's a good pitcher, too, out of the bullpen. So, uh, yeah, you know, I don't know. What do, you, what, do you think, what do you think is a big major weakness in this team? Well, definitely, I think, for the bullpen. I mean, you got Karinchak and Klasse, but it's only two guys. You know, and Klasse is a closer. So there's got to be a good, that guy in the middle. For the, you know four or five innings, if you know Bieber gets lit up, McKenzie gets lit up. We know Savali is going to get lit up. Same thing with Zach Plesac, uh, for crying out loud. Uh, they're going to get lit up. They both have sub four ERAs, so you need some a middle relief guy. And they they don't really have that, and that's the problem. Um, but if as long as they keep scoring runs, which it seems like they do, they might be all right. And that's how they squeak out those ninety two games like they did last year. And I and I I think they'll probably do around the same. I think they'll be around ninety again. You think so? So you, you lean over 86 and a half wins, sounds like them. Yeah, I, I have them. I can I can see them going 92 and 70 again, the same exact record. Because they didn't really they didn't really do anything in the offseason. Yeah. They got really, like I said, Owen Owen Miller, and yeah. now they got Josh Bell. Yeah, so it's about the same team. Um, yeah. And I think uh, you know they play less team less games against the division now. I think it's going down to like 13 games against each opponent. Which will hurt the AL Central. I'm not gonna lie, because the Guardians were able to beat up on some crappy teams last year. But yeah, I'm yeah. I'm kind of fortunate. That's why I think my Tigers are gonna have a better record. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll see about that. But uh, yeah, for the most part, you know, I can see this team. They they got what it takes to win it again. They're gonna stay in it because they put the bat on the ball. It's uh, you know they're fun to watch because they they aren't just like a home run strikeout team, which you see a lot of nowadays. So I I like watching them play, but. Um, you, you think they, uh, you think they win it all this in this division again, huh? Uh, they're definitely winning the division. I mean, it's going to be close between them and the and the White Sox, but I, I think it's just going to come down to again, like I said, offense. Uh, good pitching, of course, usually wins, but I know the White Sox probably have better pitching, but the hitting, it, the Guardians are just way better at hitting than yeah. what the White Sox are going to be. Period. Um, yeah. and they and the Guardians shown they can hit good pitching, so. Uh, yeah. yeah, I I yeah. see no, no no change in the the division at all. Gotcha. Well, they were sixth in team ERA last year, uh, seventh in batting average, and then only fifteenth yeah. in runs scored. So I mean, they put the bat on the ball. They just need to score a little bit more. But that you know that that's enough for the AL Central, as you'll find out. So that's yeah. the Cleveland Guardians. Again, we're gonna have our best bets for this division uh, at the end. But let's move on to the Minnesota Twinkies. The Twinkies. Oh boy. No playoff Love wins in the last night. 19 years. <laughs> love it. Yes. Absolutely right. love it. If you are 19 years old, you have never been on planet Earth when the Twins have won a playoff game. Last season, 84. Over under wins says 83 and a half, and they won 78 last year. So they project a little bit higher, just above 500. Um, last year, they were 17th in runs scored and 12th in team ERA. I mean, this team is as like, average as it gets. I mean, they just weren't great at anything, they weren't really awful at anything. Um, as you can tell by the record and the stats and everything, but off season they added Mister Joey Gallo in the off. My absolute favorite man alive. 
hate Joey Gallo. I hate him. Um, and uh, there's no shift, so he's apparently going to be better until they realize they can still put an outfielder over to the right side like they did in spring training and uh, yeah. figure out how to defend him. So, or or they just throw fastballs down the middle. Or that too, yeah. <laughs> uh, <shift. laughs> it seems they cannot have to hit those. So <laughs> He can hit a curveball, but he can't hit a fastball. We're giving Gallo a bigger bat this year, actually, like a bigger barrel to help him out. It's uh, it's not going to be enough. I don't know why teams keep wanting him. It's crazy. Um, also, and, and paying him eleven million yeah. for one year, and yeah. he, you know, he only had almost two hundred strikeouts with three hundred at bats, so he's striking off literally fifty percent of the time. How did um, he earn eleven million? Like, what did has I, I don't know? Yeah, it makes sense. I, I don't know. He batted one. He batted one sixty last season, that, wow. below the Mendoza line. And he gets eleven million for a year. Those guys are way better. They get way less. It's insane. So what I'm saying is, Joey Gallo is was added in the off season, but he's actually probably a detriment to this team. Uh, yeah, he's added, probably going to be traded at the deadline. Oh I, yeah, I, it, it's not going to surprise me. Yeah, they added Christian Vasquez, a good hitter, and then also yep. got uh, Pablo Lopez, good starting pitcher. He yep. had some injury issues last year. They got him in a trade, I believe. They traded away the batting champion of the American League last year, Luis Arias. Um, and they got Pablo Lopez to help with that staff. They lost Miguel Sano. Feels like he's been on the Twins for a while. They lost Gary Sanchez, who has really fallen off planet Earth. Good. Same, thing, same thing with Sano. Yeah, They're about the same player. Yeah, Just a no, all home run or whiff. All and, or nothing. Um, Archer, they added, and Bundy, uh, and then Gio Urshela. So that's not a bad pickup. But uh, to me, like I said, it's a it's a middling it's a middling team. You know, what do you, what do you think are some strengths or what do you like about this team? Uh, it's definitely not going to be their starting pitching because all they really have is Pablo Lopez now, and he's not even that good. Um, hey, I, I like Joe Ryan. He was a good rookie last year. I, I it, he'll be all right. Like I said, they got Sonny Gray as their number one starter right now. He in their depth chart, and it's like he played well I, last year, but I don't know if he can do it again. I will yeah, say. but but they're all I mean, looking at all the pitchers and their ERAs. They're all above three and a half, so that's that's yeah. not going to help you there. And not and you know only Pablo Lopez has a ton of strikeouts along with Joe Ryan. Everyone else is kind of just mediocre. And I'm looking at this offense from the Twins. I I don't think they'll have enough firepower offensively to keep up with the runs given up. Well, so well, hold on. It depends. If Byron Buxton decides to stay on the field this year, yes, I would love if that guy stayed stayed healthy because he was last year. He was projected he was better than Trout in the beginning of the season, statistically oh, yeah. wise. And it was like this is the best outfielder in the game right now. Um, and then he gets hurt. And then he comes back and still hits twenty eight bombs while batting like two twenty five, and yeah. gets like you know. But he'll still you bags. He's a five a legit five tool player. So there's no way like you want Byron Buxton healthy. He he'll definitely lead your team. You, you oh, could bat right. him one. You could bat him one through four. Yeah, he's the best player on this team when healthy, without yeah. a doubt. Oh, yeah. um, he hasn't played more than a hundred games since 2017. By the way, that's just insane. That's a, yeah. it. Sucks. It's a waste of a talent. I mean, that's a great player that could be. He's a Hall of Fame talent if he was healthy. Yeah. He really, I think, in my opinion. So, and also, by the way, his averages when you're hurt all the time, it's tough. I mean, you're not going to just hit yeah. 300 when you're you're off and on injured. So. Uh, but yeah, you know that three that rotation: Pablo Lopez, Joe Ryan, and Sonny Gray. If Sonny Gray can repeat it, it, it's not a terrible. You know, we're not talking about a terrible rotation. Um, their fourth pitcher is Kenta Maeda. Two years ago, he was elite. Like he had like a two and a half ERA. Um, last year, he had he was injured. So you know, if he can come back to that, it's not a bad staff. I don't think their bullpen is very good, though. I'm gonna be honest. No, they 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 literally only have two guys. They added Jorge Lopez from uh, Baltimore, which, which is, is actually a, bad, a pretty good one. Yeah, That's not like bad. That. Durant Durant needs work, but I mean he could be a solid closer. Um, I mean, if you do if you do Lopez as a setup guy and Durant as the closer, you'd be pretty yeah. set. Um, yeah, but they have to lead. get they have they gotta have the lead. Yeah, yeah the point. The lead. they got you got gotta have the lead. If you don't have the lead, then you're 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 just screwed. Yeah, I mean, and Durant no... one point eight six ERA last year. He throws mm-hmm. cheap. I mean, he yeah. throws cheap. But uh, yeah, he, you know, chose, he chose he chose craft singles mac and cheese. That just yes, it's ridiculous. Yes, it um, here's the real question. Royce Lewis, he's been like the top prospect for like a hundred years. Can he, he has two ACL tears already. I mean, yeah, if, yeah. If they, they were counting on him. He would be huge, but, uh, you know, I don't know what that's going to be like. And real quick, Carlos Correa, the <laughs> debacle that was Carlos Correa. Yes. Him, he's like the guy, uh, you know, when you, 
and the twins are just kind of waiting for him. It's like the you're breaking up with somebody, and that person just like, "Hey, I'll be here after you check out the field. I'll still be here waiting for you." And that's yeah, what happened. He, did, like, he, did, oh, he, he definitely needed to stay there. The best spot for him is yeah, is what I'm saying. To be honest, yeah. uh, the Giants. I have all you know, being in the bay from the Bay Area, all these Giants fans, all my friends were like pissed that they didn't get him. And I'm like, dude, it, that's a savior. Um, you don't want to yeah. waste all that money on that guy. He's good. Yeah, you can't. Not- you can't build a franchise around him is what they're trying to do. Yeah. Um, and he's still kind of young. He's like 26. So, but mm-hmm. either way, yeah. he will, did come off his best season, but we'll see. Yeah. No, if everything goes right, this team can finish a little over 500. If things don't yeah. go right, we'll finish around 75 to 80 wins again. I mean, that's just what I see him. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's a middling team. So I think we're on the same page on this team. Let's move on. I'm done with the Twinkies. Let's go to a team that I am very interested in this year. The Chicago White Sox last season, 81 and 81. And that's after finishing 93 and 69 in 2021. Uh, You had teams say, you know, try to mimic their team. I heard DePoto, the Mariners GM saying, you know, we're trying to build it like the White Sox do through the farm system, through all the young players, everything else. Well, the White Sox aren't there yet. Yeah, they're not there yet. But um, losing La Rosa is definitely going to help them for sure. So we'll see. The number one move in all of baseball last year was the White Sox getting rid of La Russa. <laughs> that was like, yeah. that was the best move in all of baseball. Yeah. Um, but uh, I, mean, I, mean, I was asleep standing up. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> this team is a team that was on the rise that everyone thought was a World Series contender, and now it's come to a screeching halt. And we have some players that need to prove they can stay healthy, and we'll get into that. But over under wins this year, 83 and a half. So they're not projecting them to be that much better than last year. They don't. Uh, the books don't think, uh, you know, that was a fluke or anything. So, um, but really, real quick in the offseason, got rid of La Russa. They lost Jose Abreu to the freaking Astros. Uh, Johnny Cueto they lost, and they also lost A.J. Pollock to the Mariners. And they added Mike Clevenger, who's a good piece in the rotation, and He's added helped. Andrew Benatendi. And I will tell you why this helps. I know this because I bet baseball. The White Sox suck against right-handed pitching. They are elite versus left-handed pitching, and they need some help against righties. And Ben Attendee is that lefty bat that they really needed. Uh, injuries yeah. and consistency have just derailed this team. That's what it is, injuries and consistency. But if you look okay. at their lineup, let's be real honest, it's solid. I mean, it's absolutely it's, solid. It's, if, they're all, if they all stay healthy, it's a, it's one of the best lineups in the league. Um, yeah. But they have to stay healthy. Like like Elo, Elo Jimenez, he's a beast, but he can't play defense to save his life. He couldn't, he couldn't even catch a cold. Um, That's true. It, it's um, just it's just insane. I mean, him and Luis Robert. If you get healthy, like yeah. prime year out of them this year, those are two guys. You throw that with Tim Anderson, who is the he's led mm-hmm. the league in batting average. If you take it since 2019, he's an elite yeah. hitter. If you take those three guys and add Ben Intendi as a good piece, you know he's not a stud, but um, I, you know, but he's, I don't know. He's, he's 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 a he's a high average hitter. Um, yeah. he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna hit 300 plus for you. Get you like 50 ribbies and like 12 home runs. Yeah, and play. And play good defense. He's also a really good yeah. defender. Which they need. So yeah. they need that because he's going to take Eloy Jimenez's spot out in the outfield. And now Eloy Jimenez is going to be a DH, which is Eloy. perfect Eloy. for what they need. Oh, it's absolutely, it's yeah. perfect well, what they need. It's a big addition, Ben Attendee. But also, yeah. uh, Yohan Makata, he's a solid player. You know, he's I love solid. that guy. Yeah. I love that guy. But he's on, the, he's on the down, though. And it's just it's killing me. It kills me to watch it. Because I, I like that guy. A switch hitter, just... Solid defender just is not catching a break right now, and yeah. it's just, it's just right. terrible. But you know he, hits, the, he hits right; he's good. He does. Yep. You know who the X factor in this in this division is, though? It's Andrew Vaughn. This guy, I'm telling yeah. you, I'm telling you guys, uh, Larusa effed him up. He wasn't playing him at his original position. He wasn't playing every day. This guy is a everyday first baseman. First baseman. He was the third overall pick in the draft, and I'm telling you, this guy's got power. This guy can hit. He played 134 games last year, hit 271, 17 bombs. He's young. I expect a huge year. He's a guy I'm going to target in fantasy drafts. Yeah, uh, 76, so 76 your, 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 You didn't hear when me. I was looking up, he's... I don't like him in fantasy. I didn't say that. Just pretend I don't like Andrew Vaughn. You don't know that. <laughs> or a draft next week. <laughs> That's right. Uh, no, I'm, I'm, I, I, he's, he was on my draft board. Because even when I looked at his stats, I was like, he had a sneaky good season that nobody really saw. And he's I was young. like, yeah. Dude, he had 270, like you said, 270, 17 bombs and 76 ribbies with a 750 OPS. Mm-hmm. Like that's that's a solid player. And like you said, he was supposed to be a right fielder, but now they're moving they're moving to first, and it he's 
definitely going to be better in first. You need yeah. more speed on the outfield, and that's what they're getting with like an, an Andrew Benintendi. Yep, I agree. So, I mean, their lineup has the potential to be six deep, you know, six pretty solid hitters. Uh, their yeah. bullpen, they have legit arms coming up and down the bullpen. Uh, yeah. You know, I think, uh, was it Hendricks? Liam Hendricks? Liam like, Hendricks, uh, the closer, yeah. Yeah, he's got, uh, I forgot what the sickness is. Anyways, he's going to be out for a while, unfortunately, but it's not good. But uh, yeah. here's what could be, here's what determines everything, in my opinion. It's the starting rotation, okay? Yeah. This These five pitchers, if you put together all their good seasons they've had, like if you take their best, this is an absolutely elite starting five. But then you have oh. guys like Lucas Giolito who decided to have an off year and have almost a five ERA last year. You know, who, who's yeah, your favorite of these guys? But you got D- Dylan Cease, Lance Lynn, Giolito. D- 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 Dylan Cease is obviously going to be the stud, as you yeah. pointed out earlier. He's probably... I I would I wouldn't be surprised if he does win the Cy Young. Um, dude's nasty. My favorite though, who needs to step up though, is going to be Michael Kopech. Yeah, that guy. If he get, if he gets it going, cause he throws gas. Um, yep. and he's he he's pretty solid. Bullpen, right, he was bullpen, and then last year, yeah, he's, he yeah, he started bullpen, but they they brought up a Garrett uh, Garrett Crochet, that yep. lefty that throws you know yep. Chapman gas. So they have him. They have Aaron Bummer in the bullpen. Um, who's a bummer. Um, so it's it's not really good. They have a few arms, but if you can get Michael Kopech and all these guys give you solid starts, you're not going to need much bullpen. If you can, if they can get you a solid five, six, maybe seven innings, you throw in you know Aaron Bummer and then throw in you know Liam Hendricks, literally yeah. top three closer in the league. So yeah. Yeah, that and then you even have Garrett, like I said, Garrett Crochet. He can come in as a setup guy and just blow the doors off. They they got arms. I'm I'm telling you, they got arms. Yeah. So Dylan Cease, Dylan Cease, we all know is going to be a stud. Lance yeah. Lynn, he had, he had a 2.69 ERA two years ago, and then went to a four. That's what I'm saying. Like these guys are going up and down, as opposed to just staying consistent. Uh, Lucas Giolito, he was one of the top pitchers in Major League Baseball a couple years ago, and then he had a, he had the ERA almost five. And uh, it sounds like he fixed his mechanics from what you hear in the off season and, and did some things. But if those three guys have seasons that they have can prove have proven they can have. This team is not a team you're going to want to play. I mean, this team is a legit no. talent. Can they put it all together? New coach, we'll see. Um, but uh, yeah, I we'll we'll talk more about Dylan Cease in just a little while. I think Brad already kind of hinted at it. But uh, yeah, yeah I, if, if Lucas Shilito can get back to his side, I mean, he won the Cy Young like four years ago. Isn't that crazy? You know, know. like it, he was like the best pitcher for literally a season. Well, but a literally season. season, <laughs> literally a season. Next season, yeah. he was he was not even that good. And it's yep. like, what the hell happened? Um, baseball who knows? Happens. Injuries, yeah. Baseball happens. People decide. You see a pitcher enough, and you get tape on him. Now you learn what they want to throw. Who yep. knows? He could be tip, tipping his pitches, and now people see it. Yep. Or you just eat a lot of food and don't work out in the offseason. You know what I mean? Who knows? That too. Pablo Sandoval. There you go. <laughs> the Pablo effect. The, yeah, the um, Pablo effect. Also, Mike Clevenger is a great number four pitcher. I mean, I don't yeah. have any problem with Clevenger. I think he's a good pitcher. Yeah. If you're talking him and Kopech, maybe four and five, or maybe Kopech's three, you know, Giolito's five, depending. But you don't have a pitcher in there where you're like, man, I don't want to throw him today. Like, they are all they all have the ability to be solid. So that's the White Sox. I think this team is a uh, sleeper team. Uh, I like them to win the division, honestly. I, I didn't put it as a best bet, but I think the White Sox have a real chance. Like I said, this division has had three winners. It's going to be close. So Yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be close for them. Yep, they got a chance. So that's the that's Chicago good. White Sox. Holy oh boy. crap, here we go. Here right. we go, baby. We're going to try to keep this not too long because no one wants to hear about the Tigers. Just Everybody wants to hear about the Tigers. We, okay. we got some young talent. But uh, last season, 66 and 96. The over-under this year is 70 and a half. They predict a little better. Um, It was a rough rough luck year for them. I'm going to be honest. Injuries, regression from some players, which I think some players are due to bounce back if you look at some of the re- regression numbers. Um, And speaking of them, Javi Baez. He won't be as bad as he was last year. He can't be. He just can't be. Oh. And then, uh, Cabrera, Cabrera, Scoop, uh, Akil Badu. I mean, all these guys, it's like they all had their down year on the same year, it seemed like. Uh, it was just, it's just what it seemed like to me. Which, but, I uh, hope, which I hope is the case. Yes, true. And uh, their prospect, top prospect, Riley Green. He was doing pretty good. Broke his foot, though, last year also. He's a stud. Um, and uh, Spencer Torkelson, their you know top first baseman prospect, he struggled last year. Uh, but their really bright star was Tariq Skubal. Great lefty pitcher. Unfortunately, um, 
I don't know when he's coming back. When when is it, Brad? Is he out for a long time? He's got surgery. He's on the six day DL. He's not. He, I, I'd I'd be surprised if All-star he came back. Break, it's like middle of yeah. the year. Oh, you don't think I'd be, I'd, I'd be surprised if they even have him back. It, it also depends on what we're doing. If we're like in the yeah. hunt, right for the division, yeah. yeah, bring him back. But if we're just the same old tigers, just getting our you know our doors blown off, then why 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 risk him getting hurt and just have him come in for a few innings here and there? I mean, that's true. So, that's the I'm problem. A- I know these guys come from surgery. And then you throw them in there real quick, and they get re-aggravated, and they get hurt, yeah. or their, you know, their momentum, and they're, uh, yeah. Is, is it just... a throwing hand? <laughs> yeah, it's just throwing hand. I mean, so then, like, you can't even train. Like, you know what I mean? You're just, no. like, you're stuck. So you're starting from scratch again. They they shouldn't rush him back at all. I agree. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna it's, kick it's it a flexor you. tendon. <laughs> I, I'm, oh, that sucks. I'm going to kick it to you. Give me some strengths of this team. Like, what what's going on with this? Oh team? boy, the Tigers with strengths. All right, so <laughs> uh, obviously it's not it's it's not going to be their starting pitching. Um, that that's for sure. Like I said, I just want to note some key injuries here. Jackson, all starting pitcher prospects, Jackson Joby, lumbar spine inflammation during spring training, and now he's out for three to six months. Oh. You know, and as we just said, Tariq Skubal. A flex tendon surgery. He's out on the 60 day deal. He's having surgery. Then you get good old Casey Mize, my absolute favorite, number one pick in the draft. And now he has Tommy John. And he's, like I said, out for 60 days. But like I said, who knows if he's ever going to pitch? I uh, got to get rid of these guys, to be honest. We got to trade them at some point. Um, I mean, I'm starting rotation. I don't think it's that bad. I, I, I it's not That's the awful. best in the division. I don't think it's that bad. I think I think I think you're just being a hater at this point. No, no, the starting pitching is awful. It really is. I think their lineup will be better this year. Um, their bullpen, you know, I'm sure. Oh, the bullpen's always terrible. The Tigers yeah. never had a good bullpen ever, and that's why we never won any of those playoffs in the World yeah. Series because just a starter go, gets his doors blown off, then you can't even have a bullpen arm to come in and save. Well, like Al, Al, Al Albuquerque. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> Is last year, but they lost them. They traded him away, or I don't yeah. know if it's true or lost, but Gregory Soto, he's gone. We, trade, we, uh, we traded Jimenez, Soto. Jimenez gone. Yeah. Uh, what's the other guy? Uh, Fulmer, right? Yeah, my, Michael Fulmer. He's gone. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I can't imagine this bullpen. I mean, it's got to be probably bottom no. 10 of the league. Easy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, the but, bullpen, sure. I'd, I'd say it's bottom five of the league. Um, it, it, there's nobody. I mean, our closure is going to be either Alex Lange or Jose Cisneros, who probably hasn't even played any baseball in his life. Um, <laughs> He's new and, to baseball. And, yeah. And, I mean, our starting rotation, like I said, I don't think it's that crazy bad, but it's not good. And no, Eduardo Rodriguez. Say that to me. How? How? Is that yeah. not good? Well, and, and, and Eduardo Rodriguez, from what I'm seeing in the spring, I'm just going off spring training here. Yeah, he's, our, yeah. our starting pitching has been looking really good. Um, Eduardo, Har- Eduardo Har- Rodriguez looks good. Spencer Turnbull, he looks pretty good. Matthew Boyd. I know you, your Seattle Mariners had him, but if he could turn it around like he used to be with the Tigers before he went to you guys, it, it'd be all right. If he could get like a 3.5 ERA and keep us in the game, it'd be fine. Uh, yeah. Matt Manning, up-and-coming star. He's, he's, he got you know beat around Matt last Manning, season. But, but, was he good last year? I didn't think he was, but maybe I was maybe no. wrong. Hey, he had a 4.8 4. ERA. Like he was, he's he wasn't young, really that right? good. But yeah, but he's young. Is yeah, he's yeah. another one of our draft picks that you know starting. We only draft starting pitching that never works out. That's what we do. Yeah. I was going to um, say, and so then, the problem with the Tigers, you guys were supposed to be by this point. You guys are supposed to be pretty good and start building, but the, yeah. the myth of your starting pitcher prospects are just are just taking down this franchise right now. In my yeah, opinion. they're just they're just not staying healthy, and then they come in too early, and they get you know yeah. they get lit up, and then they you know they have no more no more tenacity, and then you get good old Michael Lorenzen, God. Uh, that's, I mean, that's another guy that's, you don't know what he's going to do. He can either be really good or be really bad. And I, I from what I've seen already, I think he's going to be really bad. So I am not going to be surprised if we make some more trades to the trade deadline and get rid of some of these guys. Uh, but I mean, there's a couple decent bullpen arms. Like T- Tyler Alexander is a, was a starter last year too, and did kind of bullpen and start. He's pretty decent. He's a pretty crafty guy. Will Vest. He's being a stud in spring training right now, but again, it's just spring training. And then you got, you know, Jose Cisneros or Alex Lange. They're probably going to be the the closers or the setup, setup and closer back and forth. But yeah, the bullpen's definitely not our strength. Starting pitching's not going to be our strength. I think our offense and defense are probably going to be our strengths. 
we have pretty good defenders. You know, yeah. Javi Baez at short. Um, we got this new kid at third base. And then we got Ry- Riley Green in center. You know, what I'm really hoping on is Eric Haas. Yeah. And Our catcher, Austin, he's, he's, he's Austin, a little, he's, he's a stud. He is. Austin Meadows has shown he can play. Yep. I think he was hurt yeah. last year. But, um, I, in my opinion, in a, like a perfect world, like Javi Baez bounced back. Austin Meadows stays healthy and plays like he's yeah. played for most of his career. Um, and Riley Green and Torkelson make that next jump as jump as young players. Um, you know, you start looking at all that, you know, then you have a, a pretty decent lineup. Now, it doesn't mean they're a playoff team because they're pitching. Like no. you mentioned, it's just god awful. No, um, we can't. It doesn't matter. Yeah. The offense isn't because it was when we had bad bullpen back in the day. Um, oh, and that's what lost us our series. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, if it like even even Badu. If he could just stay up and not be sent down all the time and just not yeah. struggle, like the spring training, he's a beast right now. Um, yeah. The Tigers lead all spring training in the majors in home runs, which is out of this world. Um, Torkelson, yeah, doing it, it's shock. Torkelson is still terrible. Um, I, and I, him, but I guess he's not good. I don't. I, I, I really don't think he could put it together. I, I just, yeah. I, I think is it solid prospect, but I, yeah, I. I think we can get a decent amount of draft stock for him if we trade him to somewhere. Yeah, before his draft, uh, before it tanks and nobody wants him anymore. Exa- exactly. I think after the spring, it's just we should already be shopping around and getting yeah. rid of him. I, I just well, don't think he's going to be that good. I will say this. If Tariq Skubal's in this rotation, it makes it look way different. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. It would just be a huge addition. So, you know, I don't know. I we all we all on the same page. I think you think they're going to be better than last year though, correct? I mean, you, you're not expecting 66 wins no, or anything. I I don't think they're going to be even 500, but I I I I think they're going to have 78 wins. Especially yeah. playing the division less. They're they're outside of the division games. They usually play good. It's usually the you know, the White Sox and the the Guardians just beat up on the Tigers. Yeah, you know, do. and that that's pretty much it. And that's where most of our losses come from. It's just those two teams. Uh, but we go outside of the division, and we win these tough games against good teams like the, the Yankees. We own the Yankees for whatever reason. We can just yeah. beat them. But yep. you can't beat any crappy teams. It's unfortunate. <laughs> you can't beat anybody people. in the division. Yep. yep. And there might there will be a bet on this later. You will see. So that's the Detroit mm-hmm. Tigers, the famous Detroit Tigers, Brad's team. Uh, let's infamous. finish off with just a beauty beauty of a team, guys. The Kansas City Royals last season sixty five and ninety seven over under wins sixty nine and a half. They're projecting like what four more wins out of them. Um, yeah, I don't even think they're going to get that. I think they're going to be worse. They're going to be absolutely worse. They finished fourth or fifth in the division every season since two thousand eighteen. Yep. Um, in the off season, they lost Aldebert, Aldeberto Mondesi. They added Franmil Reyes, power bat, Araldis Chapman. Went to the Royals. What a career ender, ender he is. Uh, and Jackie Bradley Jr. So, you know, not a ton of additions. I think they traded Ben Attendee last year, right? Middle of the season. So they have Yeah, they traded they, they trade him to the, the Yankees middle yeah. of last season. Um, let me give you my synopsis and the analyzation of this team. It freaking sucks. Yeah, this team sucks. It's, it's, it's the worst it. team in baseball. It's the worst team in baseball by Ooh. far. By uh, far. Oakland A's are pretty bad, man. I'm not going to lie. I think Oakland A's would beat up on this team. Yeah, maybe. Um, here's their strength. It's two players. Bobby Wood Jr., fourth and rookie of the year last year. We all know Bobby Wood. He's a stud. He's going to be special for a while. Um, now he's playing hitter. shortstop. Yep. He's a good defender, good hitter. Um, he's the man. And another mm-hmm. guy that people are sleeping on that I like, Vinny Pasquantino. Um, he is a, he's kind of one of my breakout players. I really do. If you break down his numbers kind of to Freddie Freeman's rookie year, they're very similar. Um, he's been good in the minors. He has the track record. He has the potential to be a good young player. I, you know, I don't know enough about him to say sit here and say he's going to be a superstar. But I mean, he he last year he had an eleven percent K rate as a rookie. Eleven percent. That's yeah. it. He hit two ninety five with ten bombs in seventy two games. This guy's a hitter. So, um, you know, Bobby Witt Jr. and Pasquantino and Salvador Perez, those are major league bats. What's around them is hot garbage. Hot garbage. Yep. Um, the only other guy I would throw in there would maybe be MJ Melendez, uh, yeah. the, the the young catcher guy. But now he's gonna be playing outfield because he's fast. There's no point to have yeah. him catching, especially when you have Salvador Perez, one of the best catchers in the league. So why yeah. why would you do that? Salvador's um, getting old. He, he, he's oh, he's getting old. 
But I mean, even if you don't have Salvador Perez, I don't think you have this guy catch. I mean, yeah. he's not going to be as good as like J. He's not going to be good as JT Real Muto. No, no, you know, it, why that's, is that's a one stop. Royal? Why haven't they traded him for prospects or something? I don't understand why he just continues to be a Royal. I, maybe he doesn't want to go. Yeah, that's true. He might like it. Yeah, he might like. He it. might just say, "I don't care," because he's not getting a butt ton of money. Yeah, like he might just be like he doesn't care, just he's whatever. Like city, yuck. He might like the, he might like the barbecue. Yeah, who, who knows? Good barbecue food. That's true. yeah. He's um, like, I want to be with Show Me State, baby. <laughs> Let's talk about this great rotation. Ready oh boy, Zach Grinky. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even think I don't even think he's their ace. I think Brady Singer is their ace. Yeah, he probably is. Welcome back to Kansas City, Zach Grinky. Uh Jordan Lyles, Brady Singer, Ryan Yarborough, and Brad Keller. Keller. Brad Keller is a freaking Christmas tree. He gets lit up constantly. I mean, he's it's just not pretty for him. Yeah. Um I don't have anything good to say about this rotation. Brady Singer, maybe no. is okay. Brady Singer is literally the only bright spot. And he probably yeah. wouldn't be a royal for too much longer, anyways. Like I would he they they'll probably end up they're going to be trading some of these guys. I wouldn't be surprised if Brady Singer's gone at the trade deadline to get some draft picks because there's no point to hold on to him if you yeah. don't have a team. I you don't have a team. I, there's no point to hold him. <laughs> I hope the Royals have a good farm system. I don't know exactly how their farm system is right now. Uh, from what we're seeing right now, I don't think so. Yeah, no. It actually makes you think how they win 65 games. <laughs> that seems like a lot for them. They played, they, 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 yeah. I, I, I have them at like 60 games this year, and that's probably even being generous. It's probably being generous. I think that under 69 and a half is a decent bet, actually, now that I think about it. Yeah. Over under wins, yeah. Oh, yeah, no, yeah. you're going under 69 for sure. They're going to they're yeah. have over 100 losses for yeah, sure, I easily. I can't see them getting 70 wins. That just seems 70 and 92. No, no that's no. getting close to average almost. That's yeah, just not yeah they're, they're losing at least 100 games for sure. Yeah, yeah. Do you know where Mondesi went, by the way? Alberto Mondesi? Oh, God. Not where he, went. he was supposed to be a stud, by the way, too. Yeah, that's probably why they traded him. <laughs> yeah, true. So there's like, we, there's no point to keep this guy if we can get other, you know, random people. Like Fra- Framil Reyes was awesome, I guess. Jesus, but Hunter Dozier's not a bad player. He's average if he can get it going. Yeah, that's true. But yeah. it's that's if they that's if he stays healthy as well. Yes, definitely. But um, Montesi, God, where'd he go? I can't think of where he went. I know it's gonna be like a, a random team that we're not even thinking of. But I don't know what happened to Modesty. He was he was this speed guy that was you know supposed to be legit, but uh, he just kept know. getting hurt. Yeah, yeah. He just kept getting hurt. That's true. All right, that's the AL Central guys. Enough of the Royal talk. That's garbage. Um, we're gonna give out some best bets. I got two best bets, and I know Brad has two also. Brad, I'm gonna kick it to you. What do, what do you like in this division? Uh, my first bet is gonna be the Tigers over. I believe 69 wins for minus 110. That's definitely going to be my bet. Why? Oh, they're, they're definitely going to get over 69 wins. I think the offense is going to propel them to get over 69 wins. They got 66 last year, and the, the, the roster is even better. Not yeah, great, I, but it's better. Like we said, it was all, all regression players, all injuries, yeah. and all they have to do is get five more wins from that, you know, four more wins. Yeah, it's 69 yeah. and a half, so all they got to do is 70. Yeah, no, I, I like yeah. it. And, and I think I honestly think they're going to get close to 80. I think they're going to get 78 wins. So she's playing now, more inside the division. Is that the big part of it for you? Because we just talked about how bad their pitching is. So how do they get to 80? You just think better matchups with other teams, better hitting? Even- better matchups and better hitting. Like I said, a kill Badu can stay at a, a nice nine hitter. He can hit for power now when he's fast, plays a, plays good outfield. Mm-hmm. Then you get you know Riley Green leading it off, who's just an absolute stud right now. Um, yeah. And a gold glove candidate for center field. Dude's just a web gem every time he plays a game. He's a stud. Um, yeah, and you know, just in Austin Meadows in right field, if he could stay healthy, I mean, he's going to hit you twenty-five bombs at least, and probably yeah. bat like two sixty. Like which we talked be, about, which should be fine. If everything goes right. This is a decent lineup, and you, yeah. when I say everything goes right, it means you need Torkelson to step up also. You know what I mean? Like yeah, if, if, yeah, if Torkelson can bat two fifty, I'll be happy. Two fifty, like, hey, thirty bombs. 30 bombs yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. If he bats 250 with 20 plus bombs, I'll be happy. You know, and yeah. like 60 RBIs, 70 RBIs, perfect. Because he'll probably bat like either from four, like four, five, or six yeah. if he's in the yeah. lineup. Yeah, I agree. So he's going to get those opportunities. Yep. So the, your first bet is the Tigers over 69 and a half wins. What is your second bet? Second bet is going to be the division 
finishes. So I got the Guardians winning the division, the White Sox at second, and the Tigers at third. And that's finish. what a create, what a cool bet. And that's plus seventeen hundred. Yeah, that's pretty huge. So that that the really the big thing there is you're saying first the Guardians beat the White Sox in the division, and you're saying the yeah. Tigers are going to finish ahead of the Twins. So you are not a Twinkie fan this year. No, I I I don't mind the Twins. That's one of the teams in the division I don't I don't hate, but I I just it's health wise. Like if if Bucks can stay if Bucks can stay healthy the whole season. They'll be they'll be scary, but I, I I just don't see it. Yeah, yeah, I I just don't see it. And their starting rotation, uh, it's not that good. They got a few guys, but and they got no bullpen. Yeah. So it's just I I don't see it. I like it. Plus two hundred odds, huge odds. Yeah, huge. Ten bucks on that sucker, win one seventy, not bad. So those are his two bets. Uh, I'm gonna give you my two winning bets. All my bets are winners, right? Uh, Dylan Cease to win the Cy Young at plus 900 we have it at right now. This guy's a stud. I mean, this guy's just a beast. He finished oh, in the man. 93rd percentile in strikeout percentage. He struck out 30% of batters, guys. Um, he had a 2.2 ERA last year. He didn't win the Cy Young because of Justin freaking Verlander. Uh, but this guy is an absolute beast. And um, I just I don't expect anything different from him. Verlander's gone. Um, there's some other pitchers, but no one other guys that can compete. I know you have DeGrom in the American League. That doesn't mean anything to me. He's not going to stay healthy. No. Um, uh, no way. Bet. My bet number one. Second bet is the White Sox to make the playoffs. I almost went with the division, um, but I'm going to go just to make the playoffs at plus 140. Like We already just talked about it, guys. I think this plus. lineup has a chance to be special. I think their uh, starters, if they're all having decent seasons, they can be legit. And, uh, you know, this division's not hard. I just think uh, between their rotation starting lineup and La Russa gone, I think they got a chance to do something good. So yeah, what what do you think about those? Dude, those are solid. That's a solid bet. I mean, like I said, the White Sox could easily, if they stay healthy and do what they're supposed to do, they could be. They could probably possibly beat the Guardians. But I just it, and it's new management. Who knows? It could change. But usually, yeah. when a manager comes in for their first year, it's never really an awesome year where they're just like it's yeah. an instant turnaround. Um, unless you're the Angels or the Phillies last year, changed yeah. the coach. Middle of the year and made the World Series, but uh, exactly, exactly. But playoff. I mean, that's that's rare. So yeah, that's a hot playoff run, anyways. Philly's still only won eighty-seven games. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah that that's uh that's what I like. I'm a, I'm a White Sox guy this year. I think they got a chance. The beauty of the make the playoffs one is like they could sneak into the sixth seed as the playoffs, or they could win the division. They got a couple different options. Um, so I like that. So those are our uh, two bets each, and that is the beautiful and horrendous American League Central. Let's bring up those uh, best bets and check out the bets recap page. Best Look at those. division in the league. The best division. Uh, in yeah, the, the league. Best division in both leagues actually sucks. Um, <laughs> Still in cease to win the Cy Young. White Sox to make the playoffs. And Mr. Brad over there has his Tigers over 69 and a half wins. Man, I really like that bet. I'm going to have to place that. I just don't see how they don't finish the 70 or more. And it's then, sneaky uh, good. I'm telling yeah. you, they're gonna, yeah. they're gonna sneak in there, and people are gonna be surprised. But I'm not gonna be surprised because I already see it. This exact, yeah, this exact finish plus 1700. This is a tough one, guys. I mean, you're picking the exact top three in that order. It's just one of those you just throw throw a few bucks at, have some fun. Uh, Guardians first place, White Sox second, and Tigers third. Those are our best bets. That was fun. That was fun. I love talking baseball, man. Yeah. I could talk baseball all freaking day long. World Baseball Classic. While we were filming this, Japan hits a walk-off double off the wall to beat Mexico. It is Japan. Lost my damn mind. S.A. right now. It's uh, Maybe Shohei gets on the mound. Maybe we get a Shohei and Mike Trout battle. Let's do that. Oh, he's going to be on the mound. They saved, they saved him for this reason. Yeah. And it almost, it almost bit him. It, it almost jumped back up and bit me. But <laughs> it's, it, it's, it's definitely Shohei on the bump, dude. There's no you way. You can't write a better script. Shohei versus... Yeah. USA to win the title. Yeah, it's freaking awesome. Oh, and, and, and Shohei leading off to get the double? Oh, yeah. And I was yeah. like, yep. I was like, it's scripted for him to do something with that at-bat to lead it off. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, if, I, if, if I'm Mexico, I don't even know why you didn't just walk him. I mean, possibly. They had some good hitters behind him, but yeah, why not? Yeah, but I mean, why, at that point, like, it's either give up a bomb or a gap or you walk or him or give him first base. Intentional, intentional, <laughs> like, you know, just pitch around him. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I agree. Um, that was the AL Central video, guys. Thank you guys for watching. All the support. We're going to get Brad back on here for some National League videos because it is fun to talk uh, some baseball with him. As you can tell, 
he is as passionate about baseball as I am. That's for sure. And we love it. We love every second of it. And uh, before we go, check out these links below right here. And check out our AL East and AL West videos. We just did those. Gave out best bets. Went through the preview of those divisions. Check those out. We had a lot of fun. And then the National League videos coming soon. NBA bets every day. We are rolling on this podcast. And we appreciate all the support. We will talk to you guys later.